This is my final lecture of the day on financial modeling in project finance. Um, and it's not this type of model that I'm talking about, it's a model on Excel. Um, so this is not an in-depth modeling course. Um, at the end of this lecture, I'll recommend um, some text if you want to go into greater depth. Um, and I'm making general points about the financial model that are not specific to healthcare, just covering key inputs and outputs um, and trying to sort of talk about the fact that the model is going to be a big part of your life. You can't outsource it completely to a modeler because the sponsors and the project team need to be a part of making it as accurate and as central um, to decision making as possible. So what's the model used for? It's used prior to financial close to assess initial feasibility of the project. And it's also the basis of stakeholder discussions um, and uh, proposal or bid submission. And then after the financial close, it's used by lenders to review changing prospects um, for the business as different things happen and sort of maybe interest rates rise and fall, et cetera. Um, and it's also used to calculate potential refinancing gain um, if you want to refinance a project, maybe you have a project at a high interest rate and you get op um, offered a lower interest rate, um, then um, it's used to um, calculate the potential for refinancing gain because as you progress in the project and cash flows have been coming in, then people view it obviously as less risky because it now has that tra track record, um, which project finance um, transactions generally lack. Um, it's also used as a budgeting tool for the company. So what's the difference between project finance and um, corporate finance modeling? So corporate finance is like looking at the value of a family or a city in totality, in aggregate. Um, and project, while project finance models look at the value, I guess, of are, are like looking at the value of one individual from the time that they are conceived until the time that they die. Like I said, project finance has a finite life. Um, unlike corporate finance, because there's no history, the model starts, um, the model, because the mo and the reason why there's no history in a project finance is the model kind of starts before the baby is born. So it starts in that feasibility stage where you have to build a model when there's no like operational company. So it's basically all looking at what the potential is, what would potentially happen. Um, project finance models evaluate risks and returns for different phases of the life of the project. What are the objectives of the project finance model? Number one, to structure debt and equity, um, um, including the size of debt, the tenor, and the manner of repayment. Um, also to assess specific risks in different time periods of the project um, after sort of the defined financial structure is given. Um, also to assess, like I spoke about in the last slide, the impact of refinancing. And then also the risks, the value, sort of, like I said before, changes over time. The, the perception of risk changes over time. So a person, say, that is graduating from university, for example, um, significantly changes in value as far as the job market is convert, com, um, concerned compared to somebody that hasn't graduated from college. So just looking at the risks over time. Project finance modeling specifics. Um, so imagine if it was actually a person. The person or projects uh, may engage in kind of high risk behaviors during their teenage years, but not all teenagers engage in high risk behavior, right? Um, so just the project um, model looks at what would be high risk phases compared to low risk phases um, and sort of calculates um, accordingly. And you need to build in some flexibility into the model so you can sort of play with it as time goes on and, uh, and as things change. Key numbers, we've spoken about the IRR before, so I'm not going to um, sort of talk about that again. We've spoken about it in earlier lectures, but I will touch on the debt service coverage ratio. And this is the buffer of cash flow relative to debt service. So what percentage of the cash flow above debt service? Um, and that's a key component to the mo um, of particular interest to lenders because they want to know that, okay, you know, if something goes slightly wrong, is there going to be cash for them to be able to, um, for the project to be able to service its debt? 
Um, and then some more complex issues to think about when you're building the model or looking at a model that has already been built. The funding cascade, for instance. Um, if there's a construction phase, then looking at the role of the senior debt, subordinate, uh, subordinated debt and equity. Um, looking at maybe if there's a debt reserve account, um, what's the structure of that and what are the sort of contracts holding that. Um, the cash flow waterfall and cash priorities, so who gets what when and who gets what first and once um, operations begin. Refinancing and cash sweep covenants, um, which are the ability of lenders um, to take cash out of the business um, at certain periods of time. Capital expenditure as well um, is something to think about when you're building the model. So the hard costs in terms of construction and building materials and the soft costs in terms of development, which are usually reimbursed to the sponsors at financial close. Um, financing cost, which is usually higher for project finance um, than for corporate finance. Um, working capital and um, O&M, hard and soft facilities management. And then the sensitivities things that you might want to play with and things that you might need to build flexibility in for. So for example, a cost, a construction overrun, what, would, so, what sort of impact would that have on the project? Deductions and penalties, like I said in PPPs for instance, the government may set certain KPIs that the company has to hit and may have penalties like in the Lesotho case that we discussed earlier for not achieving those particular KPIs. So what do those look like when built into the model? Reduced usage, so where a project company assumes usage risk, what would be the effects of reduced usage? And we saw that in the Euro Disney case. Oh, no, it wasn't reduced Euro usage that we saw, but reduced spending um, that we saw. So what does that have? What effect does that have on the project? Higher interest rates when, it's, um, when the loan wasn't given with a fixed interest rate. Inflation. We're all very familiar with um, inflation in Nigeria. And um, everybody talks about how a bag of rice was so, so priced, you know, 10 years ago and is now a much higher price today. And devaluation. I didn't actually see this in any textbook, but it's important to think about in Nigeria where we do have issues with devaluation. Um, two more concepts I'd like to talk about before we close. The cash flow tail. I've touched on it earlier. Um, the cash flow tail is the period between scheduled fin final payment of the debt and the end of the PPP contract. Because like we said, project finance projects generally have a finite life and the money has to be repaid back in the lifetime of the project. So the cash flow tail is a period between the scheduled final payment of the debt and the end of the PPP contract during which service fees continue. So it provides a safety net for both the debt providers in case the project has some kind of temporary issue um, um, with its cash flows and the equity holders as well. Balloon repayments, um, so it's actually possible for a 25-year PPP contract to be financed with 15-year debt, but with a large proportion of that debt left till later as a balloon payment, which is payable after 15 years. And it's based on the assumption that it's going to be refinanced at some point. Um, so balloon payments may be linked to a cash sweep um, in the later years of the loan, requiring that cash flow that would have normally been given back to investors um, is used for debt payment or placed in a reserve account. Um, so we discussed this earlier, but I thought I'd just sort of put in the terminology there. Um, so this risk of, you know, the cash sweep covenant coming into play pushes the project finance, um, pushes the project sponsors to refinance well before that balloon date comes into play. So in conclusion, in this um, lecture, we've discussed what the financial model is used for, how it's different from a corporate finance model. We've discussed the cost to think about when building the model, and we've introduced some terminology um, to bear in mind when building the model, the cash flow tail, cash sweep, balloon repayments, and obviously the effects of refinancing. These are my references, um, and I'm going to sort of this um, financial modeling book. I'm going to show it to you because um, a lot of people would want to go deeper into the um, would want to go deeper into um, financial modeling. So this is by Edward Bodmer, um, and it's called Corporates um, and Project Financing. As you can see, um, you know there's a lot of very interesting um, parts to this book. And if you do want to delve deeper into the world of um, project finance modeling. Um, this is the book that I would advise, um, and I based a lot of the advice um, that I've given in this lecture 
on this wonderful book. Thank you. Conclusion.